Hello everyone, it's Trevor. <laughs> it's evening now in Japan. It's January 27th, 2020. Today, or now, I would like to talk about what is going to be the topic of this video. Cycles, creativity, and consumption. So, I'll start off with the main idea, what I'd like to convey here. So, in proportion to the degree of creation arises the desire for consumption. And likewise, in proportion to the degree of consumption arises the desire for creation. So, this is in context of the theme of the cyclical nature of things, of creative force and consumption, sort of, we'll go into it later, but it's sort of like, it's like taking in breath and letting it go. It's, it seems like a sort of giving and taking. So for this, it's very important in forgiving and letting go of guilt, which allows one to flow in a more aligned way. So people might ask, what does flowing in a more aligned way mean? And it is written, wrote earlier, it means living without resistance, without ego, or less ego. Why is flowing in a more aligned way preferable to not? Well, negative emotions melt away. <laughs> and one can enjoy living. Whether that be in the expression of life through the vessel of creation, or the expression of life through the vessel of something already created, such as a video game. Even in the mundane is a sense of burning purpose. <laughs> what else is right here? And in every breeze or breath is the alpha and omega of existence. Yeah, that, that's some real <laughs> over, over the top language. Anyways, let's move on. Basically, basically, by living in a more aligned way, living with less ego, less resistance, things flow more naturally, and you can enjoy life more with, with less negative emotion. I mean, not necessarily, but at least that's been my experience, and it seems like with most others. You can just take things more for what they are rather than what your ego wants to try and force things to be. So for me, that was most recently, most recent weekend, uh, Saturday the 25th and Sunday the 26th of this month, January 2020. So on Saturday the 25th, I did creative tasks for like <laughs> eight plus hours. It was crazy. I, I entered a crazy flow state. So basically in the morning at 7 a.m., I, I had a good hour call or so with my parents back home in the U.S. And... After that, I did crazy workout, did Wim Hof breathing, cold exposure, cold shower, cleaned up my, my room. It's a little more organized now. Well, the camera's not really showing it. Oh, I do have my wetsuit this time. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah, and there's like random junk over there. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But it's there, yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> so you, I did yeah, creative tasks for eight plus hours. I started, because uh, there there's an English club that, that Saturday from like two to four. So that's what I did during that time. I fixed, uh, I went to the, paid my rental car bill, got the right door fixed. And from around 5 p.m., 1700 to around one in the morning, then the next day, Sunday, the, the 26th, I was working on typing articles for lifefurther.com. I drew a picture, which I, I'm doing as the cover art for this video. And uh, I did a video, which is relevant to this theme, but I didn't feel like it was the time to post it yet. I, th I think this is actually better going this video into that video. So that video I'll probably post later this week with editing. But I was debating whether or not to post it because 
there's like a point where like I like shake the camera because I record right now I'm recording I have a desktop computer but I was recording on my laptop just in in a, in a store in Japan just like in an Eden area and so that was already one like wait should I either either way you might see you might not but if you do it'll be called like no no one or something like that anyways basically as you could maybe tell Saturday was a was a full day it was a lot of stuff and so yeah actually that article my the lifefurther.com is actually down right now <laughs> their <laughs> name chief is trying to restore it because I tried to change my theme and then it was like <laughs> <laughs> anyways it's down right now so I have an excuse to not to not work on it but the article's done I, I've, I've edited it enough now where I could upload it right now, no problem. So the article is similar to this video. And in fact, the article originally was going to come up like before this video. And this was going to be the Monday Mind Dump. But I think I might be doing away with those. or whenever It's whenever I feel like there's like something on my mind I want to dump. But this, I have written a bullet points for me to cover through so that it's a bit more focused. And then if there's any really ranty stuff, I might snip it. So yeah, that article is called Should to Could, From Obligation and Fear to Creativity and Freedom. That's relevant to this whole conception of cycles. So going into Sunday the 26th, I slept from 10.30, I slept until 10.30 or 11. So I got like 10 hours of sleep, like 9 hours of 55 minutes, I think is what sleep cycle gave for me gave me good quality sleep I felt really good and I planned to do some gaming with a friend um, this day but that kind of fell through and so I just played single-player video games most of the day mainly if you're interested CDDA Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead and Project Zomboid and I will probably be playing some more after making and uploading this video <laughs> it's great so similar passing thoughts when I was playing games and doing stuff this past Sunday were thoughts of shoulds in regard to creative tasks. It was, should I be working on creative tasks? Mostly these kinds of thoughts fell through pretty quickly because yeah, like I, like I just said, <laughs> I wrote here, my website life further is down right now. <laughs> They're trying to restore. I tried to do a restore point because I tried to, I, I, I bought like a, a decent theme for like 50 bucks or something that looked pretty cool. I was installing it and I was like, I was just trying to import a demo, a demo and then edit the pages so that I didn't have to like spend like multiple hours. I might just have to do that this weekend. Hopefully the site's up by then. But basically, <laughs> I imported like four demos and then I was like trying to delete all the pages. Like, you know what? I'm just going to restore because I, I made backup points like a day before. And I only have the one post on lifefurther.com right now, peace and truth. So it's like no biggie. So I just restored the backup, but then it like crashed the whole site. So yeah, Namecheap's dealing with that right now. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Bluehost would have been better. But anyways, so yeah. And then, yeah, like I was saying earlier, there was the video I made and oh, I, I typed here. I had mixed feelings as to whether to simply edit and then upload it or whether to upload the video at all and I, I typed the flow directed away from hastily uploading it there's no sense of flow into uploading it. I feel like this video kind of matches the it's a better starter because the no one video that that was I feel like is like a it's like more it's like a punch it's like a Jed punch so <laughs> so having done what I did for my website life further you know what I could do I contact name cheap and they're they're fixing it right now and having already basically written the thing and somewhat edited it not completely but you know enough where it could be posted you know it's 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 acceptable enough and then having resolved to work more on my personal blog trevorwest.life during the following week there was nothing scheduled for that day in regards to my websites and video creation. 
And for language study, I kind of, I kind of totally didn't do it. I didn't do all the Chinese, Japanese. I did Wanikani, but I did not do the interpretation translation course at all. And Chinese study, Anki, nope. And no, no, no textbooks. So two strikes, am I out? <laughs> Anyways, uh, but however, however, the one, th the one thing I've realized so far is that once one starts to become more aligned, guilt becomes increasingly irrelevant because whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Let that sink in. <laughs> As the ego loses more and more grip, begins to be seen more and more for the illusion it is. The lack of control and characterization of life comes more into view. This leads to whatever is most flowy to getting done. It's no bullshit and no tiptoeing around. Whatever gets in the way of flow, get blown away. <laughs> For real. Just like this video. It's, it's just happening. It's just boom. It's just, it's done. It's already done. <laughs> That's how you're watching it. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> with no more ego, there's nothing left to do. Everything is done. <laughs> it just reminds me, this isn't in the, the bullet points. I just did a cold shower for like five minutes. And... In the beginning, maybe after a minute or two, my head was so cold and I was so cold. I was like, uh-oh. And I just started like laughing and crying at like the same time. And that's the other thing, like if weird sounds come out, like, ah, ah, all this weird stuff, just let it out. Like like a lot of people will like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't make these sounds. No, just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Make your dreams. Wait, hold on. Hold on. If I if I'm gonna Shia LaBeouf this, I'm gonna Shia LaBeouf this right now, aren't I? <laughs> okay. Yesterday you said tomorrow, so just do it. Make your dreams come true. Well, that was that was enough cringe for a uh, for quite some time, but. Now, I actually listened to that during a cold shower the other day. There's a, maybe I'll put it in the description. There's a great, <laughs> a great, like, two-minute remix of just Shia LaBeouf doing, like, just, just do it. It, it! Like, it was just a remix of that for two minutes, and it got me through. This was back when I was still training a week or two ago to, to getting conditioned to cold showering. And now I'm conditioned enough I can... I don't think I could go like 10 minutes, but five minutes, yeah, I was kind of pushing it. But I'm trying to save on, on the gas bill <laughs> anyways. <laughs> they all leave this in, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the stuff, but refocus. Let's do it. So going back. So yeah, whatever gets in the way of the flow, we'll get the blow. <laughs> we'll get blown away. <laughs> With no more ego, there's nothing left to do. Everything is done. I always, I always do this with my hand. It's everything is done. This does not mean that in this current moment that the body is not moving, typing, speaking, doing, working. But what it means is there is now no more ego with which to clog everything up. With which to lament and gossip and berate and bicker and reflect and expect and get anxious. Things just get done. Things just are. And so, as it is now, there are cycles of creativity and consumption. The cycling of giving and taking. Breathing in, 
Breathing out. There is one non-aligned emphasis I have noticed in the many motivational, inspirational speeches and music I like to listen to occasionally. Is this emphasis on hard work and needing to always prioritize and work, work, work. Underlying this is an insidious avoidance of looking at the fact that all that work, that very, very hard work, is worthless. If what one seeks is something true and lasting in and of that work and what that work brings. That is, if one seeks to merely boost the ego, then one will continue to fail as I did in the past. Once one connects with that deeper sense, and I avoid self here because there is no self, a deeper sense. You could call it the Holy Spirit, the Tao, the Way, the One, whatever you want to call it. Here I'm calling it deeper sense. With connect, Once one connects with that deeper sense, the lack of self, no self, there is an intertwining with a more fundamental flow of existence with no self in the way nothing is left undone some may have goals and desires which are not aligned that is goals and desires for things someone thinks they should have things they think they should do but which on a deeper level don't really matter that perhaps they wouldn't really care about so, seek the truth, beginning with the question such as, Who am I? Act without action. The Tao Te Ching, chapter 63. What does that mean? I'll explain it in my own words. So, to act without action is to act, is to make something, to do something, to play a game. And to not be attached to the outcomes of that game. So, as with the hard work earlier, the pitfalls I see with some people is they want to obtain all this success, you know, muscular strength, whatever. That's great. But they ultimately have this, not everyone, but some people, and it's a mixed bag, like in the motivational speeches I listen to and stuff, of what I've observed of like, well, who has this tendency or not. But if you're seeking these things as a form of ego boost, I feel like you will probably fail or it's just going to be a lot of suffering that isn't really needed because if what you're pursuing is just for this sort of egoic sense, there's really no reason to pursue it. And once you let go of the ego, not necessarily fully, but just, you know, a little bit, a little bit more than you, than the use, the usual, the use then, yeah, you can become more aligned. And, I mean, technically, if you're getting closer to no self, <laughs> yeah, how you were, this gets confusing. But, <laughs> in essence, you one will do less of what one would not want to do as much. Basically, you broaden your perspective. And you, you with that with that broader perspective... Things that you didn't even know were possible become possible. I'm going to write about this more in the article on lifefurther.com. From should to could. What was it? Um, what was it? Expectation and fear to creativity and freedom. Or obliga obligation and fear to creativity and freedom. So to me, act without action or acting without action is basically what I'm striving to do. Well, not really actively striving, because if I'm striving to do it, if there's still an I <laughs> on me doing it, this is just happening. This is like like me getting on my clothes in the morning now. It's, it's crazy. But it's the weirdness I find my... Well, I... Yeah. <laughs> Save that for the next video <laughs> that I've already recorded. This is so meta. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There is no need for hard work. Hard work, 
does not exist except in the illusory confines of ego. Let go of that ego and let hard work. That hard work will get done. Just get done with no resistance. <laughs> no extra and unnecessary suffering. So for example, with this video, I touched up some of it earlier today, like, like the script. And then I read through a little bit. No, j just kidding, I'm lying. I didn't read through it. I basically finished it earlier today, had the idea yesterday, wrote up this script, proofed it, wrote, wrote this script for like bullet points, main ideas for this video in 15, 20 minutes, edited it for 40 minutes. So I probably should have edited it for a little longer because I'm following the minimalist rule for every, basically, for any amount of time you write something, spend triple the time editing. So that's worked great. Worked great for my first Trevor West life post. But anyways, back to this. So you can get done with all that hard work with no resistance, no extra unnecessary suffering. And there'll be shifts of realization that might lead to changes in what is done. In, in this process of alignment, there might be this movement towards what is more freely flowing and further away from what is forced and restrictive. So really, listening to, getting in touch with what is whispering <laughs> to one in any given moment is key. So just play with the moment and be free in the moment. <laughs> Listen to a good song and notice is the body just, is it trying to move? Is it trying to dance? <laughs> Usually what will pop up are these negative inhibitory ego thoughts. Oh, I can't dance. That's embarrassing. And it prevents the flow of, you know, more natural response, which is hear a good tune and you're just like, you're just going, you know, you, you know, <laughs> technically there's no you, there's just, there, there just arises a going, if you want to use that more non-dualistically accurate language. There we go. There we go, Richard. Not my brother, the author of I Hope You Die Soon, which is what my next video will be on. Exciting. Yeah, it's so crazy. I already did it. <laughs> Likewise, we always got, we always got, we always got, blah, got to bring examples in. In extreme cases, such as violence or murder, it seems usually motivated out of a highly developed ego. For example, well, they deserve to die because they're bad people and they hurt me and my family, blah, 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 blah. You see, it's this narrative. It's a story. It's about how you interpret the world. No ego, no self, no problems. And in, I guess, my, my, my life, <laughs> and I, I'm at this odd in-between point where it's like I'm still more attached to my ego in comparison to, you know, somewhere to say like, who, like oh, they're, they're a Taoist sage. They're a Taoist sage. <laughs> or an enlightened individual, you know, like a Buddha or a Bodhisattva. Not there yet. Not there yet. Maybe there's, maybe there's like a microtransaction for me to get enlightenment. <laughs> in fact, being still in these cycles of noticing this, I think is evidence that I'm not at the same level as obviously other... Would you say further on? See, that's the illusion because then you get this sense of separation, which is, which is false because... It's really not that we're further apart. We're all technically all have Buddha nature, Christ nature, whatever you want to call it. And we're already there. We're already there right now. And it's just these this resistance, this ego that kind of gets in the way. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like my face is still here, but it's just being blocked. And this is like the ego. See, it's like blocking. So it's like, and slowly it starts to like fall away a little bit more and more. But like it's still kind of, maybe it's like a little bit. It's like a little, like. Like, like, oh, it's like, like, clean on a little bit. 
<laughs> Maybe that's not just really a bad thing, but anyways. So the awareness and acceptance of this state that I, that I seem to be in, of this state of cycles, of this consuming and creating, seems to finally be breaking the typical ego response of the past, which in the past I had imposed external limits to. I can only play for one hour this day, or I can only play at this time, and I will do my work at this time, and play at this time, and that's it! And then beat myself up if I strayed even a little bit. I actually still use a, I could pull it up right now, a weekly momentum planner. And on it, there's like a plan time and an actual time. And the times don't always match up. I don't always finish everything on the day. But I, my productivity has actually like skyrocketed <laughs> by me, ironically, just, it feels like I'm doing less, but I'm doing, am I doing more? It's weird. It's like I'm doing less, but I'm, I guess, accomplishing more, achieving more. I, I don't know. Do nothing, and nothing will be left undone. So there is no difference or need for a difference between anything to begin with. But then especially when it comes to work and play, and I'll plug a sick clip from Alan Watts on this. I was listening to recently. Very good. So everything is live, love, be. Further. Have a bodacious week. See you guys.